Hey everybody, what is going on? It's McKinsey, Chris Well here. Welcome back to another brand new video. Today we're gonna be uh, talking about kind of some tips for archiving Final Cut projects. So uh, let me let me kind of explain what I'm talking about. Uh, and, and I do wanna give the disclaimer that if you're using like Premiere to edit or Avid, uh, DaVinci Resolve, whatever you may be using to edit, the process is gonna vary a little bit. This centers largely around uh, Final Cut um, but you know, stick around. Maybe you can uh, still learn something interesting. So this is actually a brand new video that I just finished. Uploaded it, uh, I believe, yesterday. So, so this is the Final Cut project, and this is one of the things that I really, really like about Final Cut because this file is going to make it super easy to actually archive a ton of Final Cut Pro projects at once. So, you know, if, for example, I do take a look at the uh, area where I have my uh, Final Cuts, my uh, Final Cut projects backed up, you'll see I just have a ton of these little projects. Each one of these libraries is its own video, and I can come in here and open one of these up at any point if I ever need to make any changes or come back and grab something. And so it's super handy to back up. And, uh, you know, part of that reason also is that if I right click and choose, uh, you know, show package contents, I can actually come in here and I'll have access to all of the original media files that I was using in the video. So I'm not, I don't have to save, um, you know, like the assets that I was using to make the video as well as a project file. The entire thing is condensed into one project. But that being said, all is not well and good with uh, these uh, projects out of the box. So if I uh, right click on my uh, resource drive here, you can see I have just over 130 gigs of space remaining on this drive. And so if I want to back up all of my Final Cut projects here, um, I, you know, I drag them onto the hard drive and then, you know, I do a, a backup of this hard drive and that's how I uh, tend to store things. Now, this Final Cut project is 20 three gigs in size. And you know, that kind of makes sense. There's a whole lot of information stored here. But kind of the issue we run into is that I can only really s do about six more videos before I filled up my hard drive and I have to buy not one, but you know, two new ones so that I can have a drive to use and then a drive to back. And uh, if I take a look at uh, some of my other uh, Final Cut projects here, you'll notice that these are significantly smaller in file size. If we take a look up here, I believe the biggest one is just over around three gigs. Um, most of these are gonna settle in somewhere around, somewhere in between one and two gigabytes. Um, you know, the smallest even being, you know, like just over a gig. So this size, you know, I can do uh, 50 or 60 more videos before I need to buy new hard drives. So this is definitely the ideal situation and it's not too hard to accomplish. Um, just to prove something real quick, uh, I can open up any of these Final Cut projects as I just did and, uh, you know, immediately get back in here and uh, start editing the way that I was. So let's talk about how to reduce this file size from 20 gigs down to something more like one or two gigs. And uh, there's kind of a two pronged approach to this. And for the first part of it actually comes in um, to the editing process yourself. When I actually import media into Final Cut, I have some really cool options here. Um, so let me find, uh, okay, yeah. So here is a video. So let's go ahead and take a look at a lot of the cool options that Final Cut gives you for importing. And and this is going to be a big part of where you can really tap down on the file size. So the first thing that you want to do with Final Cut, and I would highly, highly recommend this, is you want to make sure under this file menu, you have copy to library checked. This is going to be the feature that will copy all those original media files into the Final Cut library so that you just have to back up one file. And I highly, highly recommend that. And then we just want to hop down to transcoding. And we want to take a look at two options that are really going to affect the file size. The first is to create optimized media. And the second is to create proxy media. Now, proxy media is just something that's uh, really a feature of most NLEs. It's going to come in handy if you're editing really large files on a not so powerful PC. Um, proxy media is just going to create a very small resolution version of the files that you can edit with. Um, and then we have the option to create optimized media. And what this is going to do is convert every single file you import to, to ProRes, because that's a format that Apple plays really, really nice. And this is part of the reason that Final Cut can work so quickly and efficiently. And if you're editing, you know, 8K or 4K and a lot of different formats, this is actually something I would really recommend. But for a lot of people, it's not necessary and it's really, really going to make your Final Cut projects much leaner. So uh, if you're editing, like me, a lot of times 1080p video and I'm already using QuickTime movies or MP4 files, um, they're not ProRes, but they're like H.264. Really, 
I have used, I have done projects with and without using optimized media and the differences that I notice are negligible. Now, uh, I do want to be clear, I'm not discouraging anyone from using optimized media when importing files. If you need it, it's going to make the project a whole lot faster. And even after you edit using optimized media, we can still get rid of that when we're archiving the project. And uh, you know, whenever you open it back up to edit, it'll just take a couple of minutes to refresh, to re-render all the optimized media. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you can continue to edit. It'll just take a sec to get everything working again. But for the most part, if you're editing 1080p, you know, using H.264, MP4, or QuickTime movies, uh, especially if you already have a project that's ProRes, eh, just don't worry about it. And so that's what you can do inside of Final Cut to tamp down the file size. Now the next bit is actually going to be editing this Final Cut backup itself. So let's go ahead, jump back inside of here. I'm gonna right click and choose show package contents again. And we're gonna start messing around with the actual files. And the idea here is that we want to remove everything that we don't need so that we get a much leaner file size. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click and choose get info here so that we can see the file size as we're removing things. Uh, and so basically when you come inside of this Final Cut project, what you wanna look for is the name of your individual events. And in this case, I've just called mine maxi intro. And then we're gonna have a number of items here, original media, render files, shared items, transcode media. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, open up the info for all four of these. And we can kind of see what effect these are having on our project file. And shared media, uh, if I'm being completely honest, I don't actually know what that folder does. I haven't messed with it because we're talking about not even a kilobyte of data. So I'm just gonna close that and leave it alone. Next, we have a very small folder called uh, render files. And this is a folder that is going to render peak data and thumbnail media. This folder varies quite a bit in size. I always just trash it. Next we have our original media folder, and this is the second biggest file. You know, it's uh, it's almost, uh, you know, it's a little over a gig and a half here, but what's inside of this folder is actually very important. It's all that original media we talked about. So we don't actually want to delete any of this. And now we get to the monster, the behemoth, and this is what you're really gonna be able to want to get rid of. This is that transcoded media we talked about, and this is just an absolute monster. It is 21 gigs of media, and that is just insane if you trash it. And you'll notice this, this project that was once 25 gigs is now, again, just over a gig and a half. I can drop this onto my backup drive and it's gonna fit right in. And now instead of only having space for five more projects, I have space for 59 more projects. So I hope this video helped out a lot. Um, archiving is something that I, I definitely recommend backing up all the work that you do. I don't know how many times when I was young and stupid. I mean, I started making YouTube videos and like trying to do work online when I was 12. So I have done a ton of stuff, hit the delete button and regretted it later. So I definitely recommend archiving, but there are definitely ways to be smarter about it than a lot of people are. So hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to like below. Um, if you're looking for other stuff to watch, uh, feel free to check out anything else on my channel. I'm trying to upload daily at the moment, which is more of kind of an experiment. I'm really not sure how long that's going to last. Um, but if the content isn't good, there will at least hopefully be a, lo a lot of it. So uh, you know, I guess the idea is that you won't notice. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you next time.